live from Nice, France. It's the Cube covering Dot Next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and we're here in Nice, France uh, with Nutanix.next. Happy to welcome back to the program two, two return guests, Benny Gill and Aditya Sood, uh, both with Nutanix, as I said. Uh, Benny is the Chief Architect, Aditya is Senior Director of Engineering. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All nice right. Pleasure. So, the, the, but for about the last year, uh, you know, we've been looking at, okay, Nutanix, you talked about enterprise cloud. What does that really mean? How, how do you, uh, as Dheeraj said, the goal is to become an iconic software company. Yep. It's audacious goal. Started with a couple of acquisitions. Uh, I, really this week, it uh, feels like we're kind of expanding a little bit on what kind of the Nutanix cloud portfolio, if you will, uh, is going to look like. So first, uh, Aditya, uh, pretty busy uh, since you came into the Nutanix fold. Pr bring us up to speed as uh, you know what, what you've been uh, up to since the last time we talked. Sure. Thank you, Stu. Uh, the last uh, year or so we have spent integrating Calm into the Nutanix platform and also just enhancing it so the true multi-cloud capability of different platforms come together. And I think this is one of the fundamental building blocks for the modern next generation enterprise clouds on uh, services as well as a service-centric life cycle approach. And that's what we have been up to. Yeah, so just to, to dig in for, for one second here, because Calm absolutely seems central, kind of cloud and Xi, the, the, the two things we've been talking about a lot. Um, I've talked to a couple of customers that have had kind of that early limited access. Mm -hmm. They've been really happy. A lot of customers that I talk to, they're like, ah, I've seen the slides, I'm hoping to see some demos, but you know, they can't wait to get their hands on it to, because as Nutanix has done in the past, you know, some bold claims, but will the product deliver? So where are we, when does everybody get their hands on it uh, and uh, you know, get, 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 get beaten on it? Sure, uh, we have been running some early access uh, betas with customers for the last two or three months and the response for us has been phenomenal. Our partners are very excited, our customers are excited, and uh, as well as all of Nutanix is very excited. And I think uh, sometime later this month is when we will push this thing out there to see how it works out. But so far, looking pretty good. All right, excellent. Cool. All right, Benny, a lot of new announcements. I mean, yep. we, we, we had Sunil on, we went through, there's all the 5.5 stuff, uh, but you know, he brings you on stage to talk about uh, so some of the, the, the future things, as I said, yep. uh, expanding out uh, kind of kind of the cloud stack. Give us a little bit, kind of the architect view as to, you know, how you're deciding, you know, what to build, and then you know, give yeah. us the thumbnails to what what what's coming. Yep. So, essentially, you know, what we are trying to build is a, as you talked about earlier, an enterprise cloud OS. Now, let me um, put some more meat to that, you know, statement. Essentially, an operating system is something where you run applications, right? In the back in the old days, operating systems would run on my desktop. Like it could be a Linux operating system, a Windows operating system and um, my app would just run in one host. Today, apps run on clouds, right? So the cloud is the new operating system. Now there are multiple operating systems out there. There's AWS, there's Azure, there's GCP. What does the enterprise have, right? Enterprise doesn't have a good operating system and that's our goal. So what we are saying is we need, we need to build all the aspects of an operating system. That means starting from a marketplace you know, from where you download an application to Calm, which you can deploy an application to a runtime, like EHV, where the application runs, to the networking, to storage and security. All these aspects is what we are building. And if you can see how we are progressing over the last, you know, two, three years on this, we have made uh, tremendous progress um, on a lot of these fronts. And if you look at the announcements that we are making, they, these are very strategic in that direction. How can we make um, the right components fit into the picture at the right time. All right, yeah. and let, let's speak a little bit to some, some of the announcements made. Please. Yeah, so, so if you look at, um, so far what we have done, we've had Acropolis block services and file services and, and services that allow you to run your mode one apps better, right? Now we're looking at the next generation cloud native applications. One of the first, you know, key things to have is an object store. If you look at how the public cloud evolved, it started with an object store from mode to applications. We announced that the object store service. And uh, again, in true Nutanix fashion, it's going to be highly scalable, elastic. We are looking at global scale and how can you build an object store, not only to reside in one cloud and sort of uh, be like a lock-in, but rather 
have it uh, in a distributed dispersed cloud fashion with DR capabilities, backup snapshot. The old constructs of you know, mobility are still needed in this next generation dispersed cloud. So that is one of the things. The other announcement we made was around the compute cloud, right? So you've seen Nutanix bring in hyper-converged first, then we said you can add storage only nodes, now we are saying you can add compute only, storage less nodes. And the whole idea is that now you can run AHV on a lot more servers. Even the servers that you have uh, earlier invested in, you can bring them in into the Nutanix fabric and manage from Prism. The one place to manage all your compute farm, all your hyper-converged farm, and all your storage farm. So that's pretty exciting right now. Yeah, uh, and it's interesting. Those people that would loan, they're like, oh, well, Nutanix is a hyper-converged infrastructure player. Well, that service yeah. you described, AC2, yeah. uh, there's it's no storage. It's, it's not yeah. hyper-converged, right? Yeah. So uh, is HCI just, you know, it's a, it's a piece of the portfolio? HCI was, that from <coughs> HCI was the sort of the hammer that we needed to use to get rid of the legacy, if you think about it. But, um, so that essentially got rid of the complexity of three-tier architecture, three-tier mindset. Once that's gone, and we, are, we, na we now say that, okay, this is uh, one compute fabric, and the storage fabric could be married, married to it, or in some cases it could be separate, that's completely fine. As long as there's one stack that you're dealing with, you know, a single place where you can go and upgrade your BIOS firmware, disk firmware, NIC firmware, hypervisor, you know, the storage controller, that makes it an operating system in some sense, right? And OS is a one place where, you know, it's still holistic. It doesn't have, like, I don't buy parts of an OS from different companies, right? It's one OS, and that's what we are building. So, HCI was a means to an end. I think now building a, a, an OS for the cloud is the next goal. All right, so Aditya, we, we hear the message of one OS, but if I look at any IT environment, uh, they have and because they add something new, and they have their old stuff. And yeah. then they add something new, and it's always heterogeneous. Well, I've got vSphere and AHV. Yeah. I've got AWS and you know, GCP. Um, management has to kind of deal with that, and it's been something we've been struggling in this industry for longer than I've been in the industry. <laughs> um, so, yeah. how are you looking at this? You know, where, where, where do you feel that Nutanix uh, and, and Calm is, is going to help, uh, you know, to, to, to try to, you know, not silver bullet, uh, hopefully single pane of glass doesn't, uh, you know, get, get discussed too much, but, you know, what realistically, you know, what do you solve, and I mean, what advice do you give customers to try to help them through this? Sure. Uh, so the way we look at it, that that's the reality today, right? The fractured reality of infrastructure in the enterprise and different kind of uh, vendor stacks running together. And to uh, riff off Bini's example, an operating system forever had different devices, different hardware devices from different vendors. But by using things like device drivers or file abstractions, built a consistent layered platform on top of them. So each application did not read to be written off oh, I'm reading this network card or that network card and so on. So that's how we are looking at this layered approach in Calm as well from Nutanix that yes, there is going to be AWS, there is going to be GCP. But on top of this, a single layer can be built which can go ahead and allow the applications to abstract those parts out. That being said, there is no silver bullet for any of this. There are trade-offs involved. But uh, we like to think, and based on the feedback what we have seen over the last year or so of running betas and getting customers uh, interactions, you know, partnerships, agreements, is it takes at least, I would say, 80-90% of the complexity over. Now, I will specifically not use the single pane of glass uh, word, because you, you said so, yes. <laughs> uh, very <laughs> rightly so, but I think as close as coming, and, and not just as a single screen, but as a single abstraction across multiple pieces of infrastructure, is what we are going and building now. Yeah, and, and, and I've talked to a number of, uh, of, of the Nutanix partners and you know, RESTful APIs come up all the time and that's yep. how it's easy for them to integrate with the services. Uh, you know, it's the kind of core fundamental of what we look at today, yes? yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Vinny, yep. when I think about the channel and I think about your customers, you know, selling an appliance is relatively easy. Yeah. Selling software and services and all these pieces, that is a little bit different mindset for them. Um, how do you help with kind of the, the, the customers and the go to market um, for what you're building today so that they're, you know, how do they, how do you get them ready for that? Uh, how are you listening to them? How is the feedback you're getting uh, from people impact, you know, kind of what and how you're building it? Yeah, so uh, we see 
all sorts of requirements actually coming in. For, you know, there are some large customers who still love our appliance model, where essentially they they can just buy Nutanix appliances and then forget about you know managing uh, them or you know who who do they need to call? It's one number to call, one throat to choke, you know, quote unquote. Um, and then there are some others who want to be more picky in terms of hey, this is the hardware I need to get because I have great you know, contacts with Taiwan or China and, and, and I'll get the hardware from there. I also have been using that in my other server farms. Uh, they uh, are using just software from us, so we, we sell them uh, software only. Um, so there are many different ways in which we are um, you know, solving for what customers want and there's no one size fits all. And that's the beauty of this. I mean, just like you know, I can take Linux, I can package it as an appliance and sell. You know, hey, this is a you know a, a router or something else, right? Or maybe a custom supercomputer, or I could just uh, have it independent, right? So the the beauty of an OS is that it's very flexible in what how you package it, right? And that packaging will be very diverse, and the partner ecosystem will build around that operating system, as Aditya was saying. Um, and if, as you see in this expo, there are a lot of partners excited about working with our OS and adding their value add on top of it. All right, so Benny, we, we, we heard uh, th there's a lot of features you're rolling out through Community Edition, or CE yeah. uh, first. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw the announcements of kind of the object and, and the compute, you know, there's like the disclaimer, it's like, well, this is future stuff we're working on, but we're uh -huh. not giving you a date. It's a software company, you know, how do you give guidance on this? You know, it get announced, you know, when should we expect to see it in beta, community edition, and uh, kind of generally available? Look, you're a public company, you can't give too much, but general yeah. guidance, philosophy, engineering standpoint, yeah. how do we look, because we've gone away from the, you know, 18 month major release cycle, so how, yeah. how do you look yeah. at release yeah. cycles and, you and know, so wait, wait to get them out? Yeah, and a couple of things, one is that, um, we are going towards an agile model in terms of how releases will be done. Like Aditya's team would be releasing calm at a different cadence compared to, for example, our, uh, our storage fabric, right? Although this is still one OS, but you can upgrade pieces in it, right? Separately and they can come faster. So basically the, the new services that come in, they'll need more quicker iteration and that's how they will be iterated on. And the older services where uh, you, know, you care about, hey, I, I don't want to corrupt my data and all that, there we, you'll be more conservative by nature, right? And that's essentially, uh, you'll, you'll see that's the transition that's going to happen uh, in how we do stuff. One of the core principles, like philosophies that we have in mind is that we want to make sure that the experience that our customers have, right, today uh, with Nutanix on-prem is maintained, right? Say if they want the 5.9, 6.9's reliability, if they want the NPS of 90 plus, that's what you need to, so even when we started, the reason we started with our own appliance was precisely that, we want to control the experience. And then when we went with OEMs and partners, we were you know, very strict in what we allow, what we don't allow, so that the experience is maintained. You'll see the same thing going forward, so we're not about, hey, just throwing in a bunch of features because you know so many people are waiting for it, but the quality goes down, we're not that. We want to make sure that when we, even when we talk about hybrid cloud and Xi, and we're talking about DR as a service, I mean, what will you DR? Your business critical, mission critical apps. So you expect the same quality, right? So that's what you should expect from Nutanix, that if it is GA'd, you'll, you know, it holds up to the bar. Our, our net promoter score will be, will be maintained very high. All right, uh, Aditya, last question I have for you is, in an event like this, you get to talk to a lot of customers. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's you know, huge requests. Uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of customers. They're excited about what you're doing and they want to know not only GA, but kind of kind of roadmap. What can you share with us as kind of uh, some of the big pieces? What should we be looking for uh, you know, beyond kind of the, the availability itself uh, when it comes to y y your activities? Sure, I think uh, I, of course, can't go into too much amount of detail because uh, you know, got to unveil it at the right time. Uh, but some of the things that we are, uh, one core thing we are specifically looking at is how to bridge the, the, the chasm between the old school mode one applications and mode two container based, modern, entirely cloud native applications. Like all the majority of a lot of enterprise today is stuck in this side of the divide. Mm. And it's I think very simplistic and naive to say just rewrite all your applications to fit into containers or the modern cloud and everything. 
So we are building a bunch of technologies which you are here and iteratively, incrementally get you over to the other side without you know, doing rewrites, maintaining uptime, and hopefully minimizing your spend. Yeah. So. That, that's great. Yeah, uh, Benny, I was in the keynote today, you know, we heard more about kind of the edge computing. Satyam yep. talked about it. Uh, there's certain parts of the market I talked to, it's like, well, containers are pretty much a given at this point. Yep. Heck, serverless is something, uh, you know, we're talking about a lot uh, now. Um, you know, how how is, you know, engineering and you know architecture you know keep up with this change how do you look at some of these dynamics you know how do you make sure you don't kind of over rotate you know too fast you know you, you want to be with your customers um, you not 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 too far ahead of them oh yeah so um, even in the keynote today you might have noticed right the way we look at the problem of how our customers will move to the next level for them and every customer is at a different phase in this journey towards building their true enterprise hybrid cloud, right? Some are still virtualizing, you know, to be frank, and, and some of them are uh, moving from three tier to hyperconverge, and some of them from hyperconverge to, hey, I need a better hypervisor with AHV, and then I need Calm, and then I need Xi, and so on, right? So they're in a journey. The way we look at this entire transition, even when you talk about IoT, is like, have it as another phase in the evolution, don't force it on everybody, right? So IoT is, be, being built as a layer after you're standardized on Calm, for example. Then you can use Calm as a way of saying, now I need to enable some services. That will uh, create the foundation for building my IoT apps, right? So function as a service and all that would be managed by the cloud admin using Calm. So we're building things in layers, and you know, IoT is yet another layer uh, that, that'll come out uh, in some time. Benny Gill, Aditya Suit, thank you so much for giving us all the updates. We look forward to you know, the, the releases and, and the future announcements. We'll be back with more coverage here. Nutanix next. I'm Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE.